Tonight, I'll be sharing with us on what I title, Preparing for Marriage. Hallelujah. Amen. A married man was traveling in an aircraft and he was wearing his wedding ring on a wrong finger. And someone noticed and pointed his attention and said, Sir, you have your wedding ring on the wrong finger. And the man said, don't worry, it's because I married the wrong woman. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is not because he married the wrong woman, it is because he did not prepare for marriage. The marriage you don't prepare for will confuse you when you get there. It is preparation that determines your experience. People take time to prepare for everything. Some spend seven years in the university studying about rats and lizards. But when it comes to marriage, they think they don't have to do anything. All they need to do is to just find a partner and just march to the altar and be joined together. It is your preparation that determines your experience. You don't prepare in marriage, you prepare for marriage. You don't learn how to shoot gun in the battlefront, you learn to shoot it before the battle begins. As you make your bed, so you lie on it. There is no accidental fulfillment in marriage. If you are going to enjoy fulfillment in marriage, then you have to prepare yourself for marriage. And there is no better time to begin to prepare than now that you are a single. I like to congratulate you because you are a single. <clears throat> And I like you to celebrate your season as a single. Being a single is not a disadvantage. Being a single is not a sin. You are not under a cause because you are a single. So many don't understand what it means to be a single, so they are even in a hurry to get out of the single stage and get married. Life is in phases and men are in sizes. Every phase in life prepares you for the next one. And being a single is a necessary phase in life that should prepare you for marriage. You are not under a cause because you are a single. It's not a sin to be a single. It's a necessary phase you must pass through in the process of life. And I have good news for you. It's better to be a single believing God to be married than to be married and praying to become a single. So take time to enjoy yourself as a single. Celebrate being a single. There are so many things you can do as a single that you can't attempt to do as a married person. <clears throat> your time as a single is a very, very unique season of your life that God has given to you. And it is primarily for the purpose of preparation. Being a single should prepare you for marriage. Don't forget I said, you don't prepare in marriage, you prepare for marriage. So many people are having nasty experiences in marriage today, including Christian couples. Not because there's anything wrong with their partner, 
but because they never took time to prepare themselves. They thought marriage was all about just finding a partner. If I can just find the right partner, I mean, that's it. Tall, rich, and handsome. Holy Ghost filled and Naira loaded. But that's not all there is to marriage. Every successful marriage, every fulfilling marriage is a product of adequate preparation. And the best time to begin preparing is now. Somebody say, well, I'm not even thinking of getting married until maybe seven years to come. That's the more reason why you need to begin to prepare. If only you know how much you need to prepare, you will do everything within you to prepare now. Don't forget I said, you don't prepare in marriage, you prepare for marriage. If you wait until you get married before you begin to think of preparing, it will be too late. This is the best time to prepare. This is the best time to get ready. So many people have thought that all they needed was to just find a partner and just walk straight to the altar and get married. And then some have gotten married like that only to wake up. After some few days, the woman looked at the man and said, I never knew you were like this. And then the man looked at the woman and said, as a matter of fact, you are the worst thing that has ever happened to me in life. All because they never took time to prepare. And when some people say they are preparing for marriage, actually what they are doing, they are preparing for wedding. There's a difference between wedding and marriage. There is a day after wedding. It is called marriage. Wedding is just a matter of few hours. And no matter the elaborateness of the wedding, no matter how much you are able to shake the city, after some time, all the wedding guests will bid you bye-bye, happy married life, and they go home. And the real business of marriage begins. Whatever is your preparation will begin to speak. I've met quite a number of people getting ready for marriage. And I ask them, how prepared are you? And then they tell me, well, we have just bought the suit for the man. And we have bought the wedding gown for the woman. And we have bought some bags of rice. They are blinded by wedding. Wedding is an initiation into marriage. Wedding is not marriage. Don't mistake wedding for marriage. I once met a lady that was talking so much about her wedding. And she told me, Pastor, as a matter of fact, I'm not going to use a car on my wedding day. I'm going to use a white horse. She said, I'll be on the white horse and I will hold a white umbrella. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And I also know that that lady doesn't know how to cook. The elaborateness of your wedding has nothing whatsoever to do with the success of your marriage. The success of your marriage thrives on how prepared you are before marriage. You don't learn how to shoot gun in the battlefront, you learn it before the battle begins. Otherwise, you become a victim. You don't prepare in marriage, you prepare for marriage. God has privileged you to be a single so that you can have adequate time to prepare yourself. As a matter of fact, the reason why it looks like there is delay in some people's 
answer to their prayer for a life partner is because God has weighed them in a balance and have discovered they are not prepared. And so He's giving them a long enough time to be prepared. And they are crying and crying and praying. I don't know when the life partner is going to come. The wise man said, when preparation meets with opportunity, it results into success. There is no accidental success in marriage. Every marriage that is succeeding today was adequately prepared for. How then do I prepare for marriage? Number one, acquire knowledge. Acquire knowledge. Matthew chapter 19. Go for knowledge. When it came to success in marriage, Jesus recommended reading as the number one thing to do to enjoy success in marriage. Matthew chapter 19. And verse 3. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read... That he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. Have you not read? So he expected them to have read. He listened to their question. Their question was a very stupid question. And Jesus concluded, these people have not read. If they have read, they won't be asking such a stupid question. Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And Jesus said, why are you asking such a stupid question? Have you not read? So Jesus, his number one prescription for success in marriage is reading. And that's why in this ministry, before your wedding day, you are expected to have read at least 15 books on marriage. Now, if you know how much you need to prepare, then you know that those 15 books are nothing. Marriage is a journey that you have never traveled before. You need to connect with people that are past the same road to know how to go through it successfully. What you don't know, you suffer for it. I've met quite a number of people intending to get married and I've asked them, how many books have you read on marriage? Most of the time, 75% of the time, they have not read one single book about marriage. Jesus said, have you not read? Have you not read? Have you not read? Why are you asking such a stupid question? Have you not read? So many get into marriage not even knowing what marriage is all about. They don't even know what they are getting into. All they know is everybody around them is getting married, so they also must get married. Some are getting set to get into marriage because their parents are putting pressure on them. Some are ready to get married because they have just graduated from the university, they have done their youth service, so the next thing is to get married. And it doesn't matter who comes, born again or not born again, it doesn't matter. To get married, God will take control. Praise God. When you read, when you study materials on marriage, you will find out what marriage is all about. You'll find out what you are getting into. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18, God talking about His purpose for marriage, His original intention for marriage. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. And lack of understanding of this original intention has turned so many marriages into civil war. Genesis and chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable helper for him to meet his needs. So marriage is all about meeting needs. Marriage is not about taking advantage of one another. Marriage is not about oppressing one another. 
Marriage is all about meeting needs. I will make him and help meet for him. I'll make a helper to meet his needs. There are needs, certain basic needs in a man's life that he can never meet by himself. And there are certain basic needs in a woman's life that she can never meet by herself. And so God created a marriage platform for the man to meet the woman's need and the woman to meet the man's needs. That's what marriage is all about. When you will read, you will have knowledge of the male and the female difference, the gender difference. The reason men behave the way they behave and the reason women behave the way they behave. Some married couples have come to me for counseling and when they sit down and begin to narrate their problem, you discover that the thing the man is complaining about the woman is actually the reason why God put him inside the marriage. For instance, the man is complaining that the woman talks too much. That's why you are there to listen to her. Amen. Or the woman is complaining that the man is always looking for attention. That's why you are there. Women are created with verbal power. Their power is inside their mouth. They can talk for 24 hours. It's not a vice, it's a virtue. God created them like that. Now if you are privileged to have little children, a boy and a girl, right from when they are very small, you notice the girl's mouth is sharper than that of the boy. When they grow up, it does not leave them. The thing is still with them. And you know, when you are talking and no one is listening, you become frustrated. So now because the woman must talk and because someone must listen to her, God created the man and put the man inside the marriage so that when the woman is talking, the man can listen. And when the woman is talking and talking and talking and tries to talk and the man is not listening, the woman gets frustrated and she gets into corridor gossip. Because nature abhors vacuum, she must talk to somebody. So if the man is not available, she goes to talk to somebody in the neighborhood. And one day the man will return from work and police is waiting for the man. Because the wife has said something. Hallelujah. Now that's why Peter was speaking by the Holy Ghost in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7. He said, likewise the husband dwell with the wives according to knowledge. Giving honor unto her as unto the weaker vessel, and as being held together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Dwell with her according to knowledge. It takes knowledge to dwell together as man and wife. And because of the absence of knowledge, many couples are not dwelling together, they are simply living together. They are just like hostel mates. You wake up in the morning, the wife says, good morning, and the man answers with the nose, and then he goes his way. The only thing they share in common is the shelter over their heads. They are married, but they are lonely. Because knowledge is absent. It takes knowledge to dwell together. Likewise, the husband dwell with the wives according to knowledge. According to knowledge. Giving honor unto her as unto the weaker vessel. The word weaker vessel there does not connote inferiority. It just connotes delicateness. 